I think Ted Lasso's second season, um, I just think it just carried on from the first season. I just thought the first season was really upbeat and really fun and I had that um, U- UK football culture cynicism versus the more positive, uh, creative American kind of vibe going and uh, a scene through particularly Ted Lasso, but to a lesser degree, the coach, uh, Coach Beard. And I think that, that that chemistry continued on strong, and I think it was an extremely, it was extremely funny, um, extremely entertaining, heartwarming, not all that convincing at different points, I must confess. We're going to talk about soon. Some of the finer details of football culture kind of got lost in it, but you couldn't doubt that at the end of season two, you were highly entertained and you felt good about life. JP. Uh, JP, what about you, man? Yeah, um, I like the second season. I feel that we're being set up for a group of baddies. Like, you know, like in superhero movies, you get like, like a baddie here, a baddie yeah. there, and now they're going to team up and we're getting bring our down the good guys. For the lasso verse. Yeah. So you're talking about. Evil. Talking particularly about Nate. I'm, I'm talking about well, no, Nate's team. He's. I'm, I'm. I'm talking about Nate, the Prince, and Rupert. The Emirates guys. The basically everybody that's they've made an enemy of that's never been talked yeah. about. I can see it. I can see it. I hope so because I need to see some consequences with some of this stuff because it's yeah. it's been a little light on yeah. the overall mm-hmm. consequences. That's what I'm yeah, feeling. Um, consequences, and you, I think we're gonna see a bunch of baddies trying to bring down Richmond and you know the good guys. <laughs> so yeah, basically, yeah. this is turning into a superhero story. I guess it kind of already has been, but yeah, instead and of it, a feel good superhero it, story, a real superhero story. It's interesting because, um, West Ham th- don't they have like they used to have like the baddest firm, like in yeah, Green yeah. Street Hooligans. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so ooh. they, my my mate, who's a Gunners fan, uh, or should I say Gunners fan, Arsenal, he hates West Ham. He hates them with the, He thinks that their their fans are just the scum of the earth. And of course, <laughs> we all think that about our cross our cross town rivals. But yeah. he really doesn't like West Ham, and I kind of giggled. When their name came up as the big baddies, for, well, potential big baddies for season three, I'm sure the club itself won't be the big baddies, but certainly the fact that you know um, what's her face's ex-husband has taken over the club and that Nate is working for them has kind of set it up nicely that they are at least, if not the nemesis, they're at least the rivals. Um, right. I'm sure. I was thinking, especially West Ham fans would probably love this idea because <laughs> they're pretty rough. They're pretty rough. I understand. I mean, it, it. I would. I would think so. I don't know anything much except for what I've seen in the movies and basically from IT Squad and IT Crowd, and then okay. Hooligans. Yeah, that's best. All I know about West Ham, but it makes sense now that I'm hearing it. That the West Ham yeah. guys that were in IT crowd ended up being Uber bank robbers. So, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think they'll be baddies, as in like, they won't be like psychopath baddies, but they'll no. just they'll just be something be that Ted and Richmond can come up against. Well, I disagree. You got Rupert, who's got you know, seems to be really evil. And you've got Nate, who's got issues. So yeah, we're, we're gonna get into no, no. we're gonna get into Nate as I we think, go into the details on this. I, I think, got I got words Nate, about Nate. I think Nate ripping up like that poster and leaking, leaking um, Ted Lasso's um, mental condition is, you know, a sign of things. Like you know, he's gonna go full crazy on, you know, Ted Lasso. Yeah. Right. 
So, Gift, you don't like Nate, or you do like Nate? What's You know, what clearly you Nate has been my favorite character this entire time. You know, I've never said nothing but good things about him under and above my breath each and every time. All the time. Wow. Nothing but good things. No, no. I, 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 I know we're supposed to be setting up to hate Nate, and you know what? It worked. So, it's like I, yeah. I had no sympathy. I didn't like him to begin with just because I, I was annoyed by his aggravating weakness. And then I became less, more annoyed with him incrementally because I hated his posturing of yeah, alphaness. Right. And it became, it's, it's, it always is like the pathway towards being a school shooter, in my opinion. So it's like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's that or end up being the, uh, the guy who's like, man, girls don't like me because I'm a nice guy. I, hold the door open for them and I oh, pay for yeah. their stuff and they're supposed to give me sex. Man, women are <laughs> trash. Like, that's that's who I feel are like. You, are you saying Knight here. is the English football version of an incel? Yes, but I don't feel like you have to put English version because I think that can be redundant in some cases. But it's like, it's it's just an incel. He's just an right. incel. He's exactly. an incel. Sorry. You know, I, I don't... Coming from the Philippines, what's, what's incel again? It's a, is a uh, uh, um. Hold on. What's the acronym? It is a uh, uh, no involuntary celibate. So there we go. guys, oh, that, guys who cannot that's get that's girls, that. and they're celibate, but not because they want to, but because girls will not accept them, and so yes, they feel rejected. They're typically, terrible people on the inside. So none of us are incels. No, no. Because we've all no. got ladies in our lives. No. So well, and uh, also but, you know lack the entitlement that feels that uh, women are the objects. But I feel like that's who Nate is, which he kind of proved accordingly to me whenever he, he kissed Keely. So um, it's just, yeah. I, I, it, it's one of those situations where I get the, the where it comes from, but I don't respect it. So just because yeah. I understand the source doesn't make me yeah. go like, well, you know what? Feel for him. No, it's, you're still nah. part of the scum of It is literally the people that cr become dictators. It's literally the people that become dictators. Well, he's, like the he's worst got, people are incels at their core. Yeah, he's got massive insecurities, and I think the thing that that kind of connects him with an incel is that he's got massive insecurities. Instead of dealing with it, particularly with his father, mm -hmm. instead of dealing with his, he projects it on other people. And this this case, he projects it onto Ted. When I went back and watched that big spray he gives to Ted Lasso, it's so unwarranted. It's yeah, so yeah. not right. But you know he's actually producing it towards his father. his father. But again, like incels, he's taking it to the wrong place. And right. his, his anger's going in the wrong direction. It probably needs to go towards himself. It probably needs to go towards his father. But he's just projecting it all over the place like vomit. And he's ended up in West Ham, which exactly. for some people is the same as vomit. <laughs> Sorry, West Ham fans. Um, yeah. I don't know any, so I feel nothing. But this is international, so uh, deal with it. Yeah, <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> but it's great act. Like it's great acting when you go watch him. I forget the name of the, the, the guy who plays Nate, but it's really he does a really good job. He does like, he really a really good it. job uh, making us hate him. Yeah. Like this slow transition from from such a you know guy you want to care for to this guy you want to punch when you meet him on the street. Yeah, I want you. His name is Nick Muhammad. Nick Muhammad. Yeah, Nick Muhammad. he yeah. does a great job of that. I think he's great, and we shouldn't forget that that he's really taken this character and and worked with it really well. Someone described mm -hmm. him as as the new um, Lannister. What's the name of the kid Lannister? In Game oh, of Thrones. Joffrey uh, Lannister. Uh, yeah, Joffrey. Godfrey. Yeah, Joffrey. someone described him as the new Joffrey Lannister. And that's a compliment in that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. hopefully uh. he doesn't end his acting career like it did with the kid who played Joffrey. But, you know, it's... Yeah, yeah. no, no, but that kid ended his career after after Game of Thrones. Like, it was too much. So my, my thoughts on season two was I I enjoyed season two. Uh, I was worried that it was going to be a sick parody of what season one is, like basically like a lighter version of the first season. And it was a lot of some cases it was. I think it was less heartwarming uh, in terms of like I started to be able to, to press against the um, 
against the the feel good formula that was always trying to enact the emotion inside you. But uh, I think they did a better job in giving us more depth on each of the characters, uh, which I appreciate. Like listening about Coach Beard, like mm. I'm like before I was like this dude is like low key a badass, and now I'm like. He's still cool, but he's not as badass as I thought. But it's in a good way. He's not yeah. inhumanly human. You feel me? You know, and yeah. even, even getting further into like Jamie's Jamie's father, which was an interesting little ad- addition in there. And I was glad that there was at least a repercussion that came with that, uh, yeah. even if it was for a moment. And and that's all you need sometimes to provide space and some uh, uh, foundation to it all um but yeah I, I i like this season but there was a couple flubs for me and i'm hoping season three solves some of them like like jp said like the stuff with the protest against the emirates like yeah. i felt like that didn't go where it needed to go because there was a lot that needed to happen with that um and then yeah, i was that- a little annoyed with where because I, I think i had said it before i had a feeling like they were going to make the uh, Ghanaian billionaire son uh, become yeah. a uh, a radical, annoying villain, and it's like I, I, it, it's I'm mixed on it because don't get me wrong, the actor is amazing. He did exactly what he did. He's always hilarious. I love that dude. He's a great Ghanaian actor. Way yeah. brings up for the West Africans. Ghanaian guy. I don't know. I still love him. He was funny. He was humorous. I love the way yeah. he. He, yeah. he was great. He has no words. Did it great. It, and I love Sam's reaction to him. We're truly not supposed to hate that character. And when I right. looked online at some of the comments, uh, particularly from some of the African viewers, a lot of them were very down to earth and very realistic. So someone commented that Sam should have left for patriotism. And then a lot of the comments came up and said, you've got to be realistic. Like, he was, you got, if you want to further your career, you stay in Europe. Like, if you're a football player, you stay in Europe. Right. Yeah. And that was just, that was just, and, yeah. you know, I'm not European, so I don't give a shit whether he stays in Europe or Africa. Although I think I think preferred prefer in South Africa because I love Africa. But it was a very, it was a very pragmatist point of view. And that's not to say that we won't see that Ghanaian guy come back and we won't see Sam and him kind of mend their ways and possibly find a way forward in the future. Um, and it's not to say that, you know, Sam only just said, look, for right now, here and now, this is the place for me to be. And that's a very pragmatist approach. Like if you're if you're in a club that's in the top top tier of European football, then you're probably best to stay there, right? Again, just purely from a career point of view. To stay there and to make the most of where you are, in three or four years' time, I think he's only like 22 years old, he'll be a prime, you know, high-level footballer and he'll probably be worth more and be better off for that team if they're around in three or four years' time. Do you know what I mean? For me, it, it made perfect sense. But that's why I go back again. It's like I love the idea of somebody being a disruptor and them promoting the possibility of a legitimate disruption versus a spoiled yep. brat who doesn't get his own way. I think that Ghanaian guy was, was so funny. And I think that I think we're supposed to feel some genuine affection and, and, and like to us because of his funny little rant, which was more childish than it was benevolent. Well, it wasn't evil. It was just, you know. It was, just, it was bratty. It was yeah, bratty. It was, he, he turned into the rich brat. Getting to that storyline, which I think Gift and I both t- totally dislike, which was... The relationship between Sam and the manager. What's her face? Sam um, and uh, Jessica? Sam and... Uh, yeah, Jessica, right? Uh, oh, no, it's not what's Jessica, her name? but I forget now. Miss Waddingham. Uh, Sam and uh, Rebecca, Rebecca, Rebecca. Rebecca. I'm just glad. I just hope that's over. I just no. hope that relationship is over. No, I like that relationship. I did not. Oh. I did not. I mean, it was it was all right for a moment, but the moment it was just, 
I'm just like, dude, man, like I, I get an intellectual. It's there's so many layers of terrible that goes with this this whole decision. Yeah. It's so That's, many layers of terrible. I mean, I like it for the fact that they they support like I, I, I appreciate interracial. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate the power dynamic and evening it up. I appreciate the vulnerability that Rebecca has. I cannot appreciate the level of risk that was taken for this and for it to have it's not been love slightly exposed. All. But it did. That's that's the thing. Love, love didn't conquer all. The only thing that bothers me about it is like the employee, employer oh. thing. But right, age that's and huge. Age, that's... it's fine. The age well, thing doesn't bother me at all. That yeah. that doesn't touch me except for the long term. If it's a decision to stay, whenever you're talking about the club, like if your decision to stay is for her, I had a problem with it because she is not long term. There's there's nothing long term that's about her in that situation. I can see but why I, Sam I, went. I can see why Sam went for it. Like for me in that relationship, I can see Sam because he's a young man. He's just following right. his balls, right? He's just following his dick. He's just right. going for what he likes, and she's a fine woman. But for her, she is older. She's a she's the manager of the club. She should have just said. You're owner a, you know, of the a, club. There's a difference. Owner of the <laughs> club. It is in her. The ball was in her court. Right. Um, I'm sure he's going to brag about this for many years <laughs> into the future. I don't like think he would. I, and I don't feel like Sam is a type to 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 kiss and tell. He's not a kiss and tell yeah. type. But well, let's it, rephrase it, that. I would. <laughs> like if I, I say it's probably morally better than I am. But if I did it with the manager about 10 or 15 years later, I would be telling people around the bar, guess what I did when I was 22 years old? How hot am see, I? How cool am I? Of you course. See, you see, you're, you're, the reason, you're the reason I got upset. At, this is why the reason why uh, uh, people can't share share news on the phone anymore because it'd be people like you who need to go talk about it afterwards, <laughs> scare everybody into it, ruin it for the rest of us afterwards. <laughs> Look what I did, everybody. Look what I did. Guess Guess what so, else, man. so what do we think in, in summarization of this second season of Ted Lasso? I personally think it's going. I think it's going great. I'm not sure if we can, can maintain this high level of optimism yeah. and happiness. I, I think it, they dealt with uh, J, with Ted Lasso's uh, anxiety issue. It was a good. Yeah, it was yeah. a good thing. That was good. That was th- his relationship with the psychiatrist was definitely one of the strongest storylines. Yeah, going around. She was an but, MVP. I, I do think that this is a show that can actually make it to five seasons. I don't think it can go a single bit further than five. I think yeah. it's going to struggle into four, but I I, don't, I think five is basically where the cap is going to be at. Um, and then either yeah, it just it can't go like even like the Keely and uh, Keely and uh, um, uh, what's his name Roy Kent. Uh, Roy Kent story. Like I see what they're trying to do and build out on that one, which I feel is a little bit manufactured. Because it's just right. kind of annoying on the I don't need you now and it, it, like it didn't make any sense. So I feel like they're gonna force some stuff, and that's why I go into like you only got a solid five seasons inside here. Let's remind our friends to please click on the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you know when we have new videos out. Subscribe! Subscribe! Oh god! Oh god!